Got it? Yeah. Yes, we are still trying to crack the code here. Gotta give it a pull here. Here it is. Ah! <laughs> All right. More! More! Using GPS coordinates, Eric Kristoff and I have found a geocache hidden in the woods of Sturbridge, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. We've had to solve a number of puzzles to open the darn thing. Kristoff enjoys these so-called gadget caches so much, he's created a few himself. This is another kind of gadget cache. Sometimes these are called smart gadget caches because you have to interact with it. I don't feel very smart. Earlier today, Eric showed me his Lights Out geocache based on the old handheld electronic game. Got any hints for me? Now he's helping me find the pattern that will open the cache, hopefully. You got a smiley face. And uh, there's the combination of the lock. Finally, the reward. A logbook to sign and trinkets to trade. When my kids were younger, they always got excited if they like found a matchbox car or just a Super Bowl or something like that. The kind of unwritten rule is if you trade something, you have to leave something of equal or greater value. And finally, back in the woods, Eric's seasoned hand unlocks the combination of the notoriously challenging Pandora's box geocache. And there's the cache with a bunch of trinkets to trade. <laughs> Sign your name that you figured it out. Wow. Yeah. That like is a lot of work. It is, one of the favorites in the state. This one right here. Yeah. It's Pandora's box. It is. Okay. Yeah. Weird stuff in the woods might be fun, like geocaches, historical, like the abandoned zoo, artistic, like the secret garden out in Shrewsbury, or just plain weird, like the primitive hut we find in the woods of the western suburbs, built piece by piece over the course of about 20 years by a fellow named Tom, who politely declines to be interviewed. And though he spends a lot of time out here, Tom doesn't live in the hut, but it did get us to wondering, what sort of overnight options are there out here in the woods? The forest of Ringe, New Hampshire is perhaps best known for the Cathedral of the Pines, the sanctuary and war memorial with majestic views of nearby Mount Monadnock. Also in these woods, a more humble construction, a home fit for hobbits. I don't know how to describe it. I think you just have to come. We have it listed as an enchanting solar powered yurt set in an intentional community. Hannah Bissex rents out this rustic yurt on Airbnb for 85 bucks a night. Oh, people love it. They just love it. Situated at the edge of more than 100 acres of forest on Hannah's farm, the yurt was designed in the 70s by Bill Copperthwaite, considered the father of yurt building in America. This abode may not be recommended for folks who favor straight lines and right angles. Yeah, it kind of feels like you're on a boat. Like, uh, you have to kind of get your balance and it's a funky little space for sure. Just be forewarned, staying here could be a life-changing event. Hannah's farm is part of a small, quote, intentional community, a group of households on this hill living a simple, Quaker-based lifestyle. In this summer, we had a couple stay, and they said, can we live here forever? And we said, yeah, we, we're looking for community members. They just decided a couple weeks ago to formally join the community. They're going to buy a house on the property and, and live here forever. <laughs> Oh my God, it's awesome. You know, not a lot of places are still out there. You would think vast land like this would be developed, but fortunately it's not.